Hey, Robert. Sure. Oh, perfect. Let's go. All right. Okay. Who wants to scan that? Just scan the code. Scan the code. Here we go. Boy, love technology. Did it work? I don't know. Next year's my opinion. This kind of gives you a bunch of numbers for me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I like I see it in your face. You're going, okay. I, this is the first one. I'm like, okay. Well, yeah. I was curious to see where it went. It looks like our data system, I mean, our database. It does? So, yeah. Oh. We know whoever checks in. I mean, yeah, just just include your social security number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's thank you, Thank you. Thank you. So let's try. To, there's another one on the paper here too. Uh -huh. oh. Boy, didn't miss much. No, 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 everyone, just, everyone just checking in. Good, good. On the paper right here. I heard you guys were here today, so. All right, perfect. Well, so I'm Robert Coley with IBM. I'm our technical resource for this area, the West, Pac Northwest, Hawaii, Guam, um, and everything in between. Kind of get pulled into a lot of different things. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, IBM's. I just, I just, I just turned it down. Um, we're going to talk about our uh, data resiliency, uh, basically our safeguard copy, and talk about ransomware. I mean, how many people are having those talks about what do we do, how do we prepare for ransomware? I, I mean, it's kind of the topic everybody is um, on the top of mind. So, with that, let me just say, if, if, if you're not talking about it internally, you should. We mm. had been very busy the last couple of years helping people recover from ransomware. Uh, it's, a big yeah. it's not a matter of if it's going to happen, it's a matter of when it's going to happen. And this is the conversation uh, that uh, we have been talking about. So, uh, Safeguard a copy uh, with our flash systems. It's actually something that we have included now with our 5200, our 90 to 500, and our 7300. So it's actually a feature that is something that we give you. Uh, it's no longer something that we actually charge for. It's it's a part. We don't. We believe that safeguard a copy is no longer uh, a talking point. It's a table stake, right? It's not a should we do it, should we have it? It's something that we believe should be incorporated with all Flash, uh, IBM Flash products. So, what is it and what does it do? Well, Safeguard Copy is um, part of a larger, um, how do I say, it, it's a larger footprint. It's part of our uh, Cyber Vault technology. And Safeguard Copy is the foundation building block. It's an isolated uh, air gap worm undetectable copy of your data in your environment that if a ransomware were to happen and they were to take over your system they would not see this right so on your flash array it takes snapshots it's an isolated area uh and then cyber vault is the blueprint so it ties into like your scene products 
Q radar. So now we can also automate this whole process and do real time uh, threat prevention uh, in case of an attack. You want to just hit the next slide? It's dead again. You could be a, a weatherman. That's what's going to move. Hit next time. Yeah. All right, perfect. Why don't I just tell you? Oh, there. Oh, wait, there it goes. Working again. Um, so, with our uh, Spectrum Virtualize, it's a software that runs on all of our storage portfolio. So, it doesn't actually matter what so uh, storage product you have, it all runs on Spectrum Virtualize. Spectrum Virtualize is the all encompassing software on our pieces and everything kind of plugs into it. So, with the IBM storage, you have your general, you get your snapshots, your data availability, your replication, um, uh, your high availability, your data reduction, your deduplication, as well as the spectrum virtualized safeguard copy. Um, as we were talking about the immutable copies, uh, the encryption and the air gap. Uh, with all this is, it's kind of just is now automating the whole piece with the data availability. You have your curator, like I was mentioning earlier. If you have a SIM product already in your environment, we can actually tie it all in. So as those threats start to take place, we can actually uh, create copies on the go. And as I go through, I'm going to show you. We're going to have um, we're going to go into actually the safeguard copy and showing you uh, it taking the snapshots, how do we recover, where it goes into the, this area. Right, so as we were talking about, it's a automated approach, right? So you create a schedule, it's gonna go through. This is not to augment or take the place of your current snapshots today, right? So someone says, oh, I don't need to do snapshots. No, no, no. This is not replacing snapshots. Your snapshots are for something happened right now, I need to recover. Safeguard to copy snapshots are, I have an attack, and when I restore it, I'm restoring everything and I'm wiping everything out. Right, it's an all-encompassing. It's it, it's a, for all intents and purposes, it's a ransom backup, right? In case you have ransomware. Um, let's get into the picture. Here we go. So how does it work, right? So I have my production data. I set up my intervals. It's completely customized by you. I can do it every 15 minutes. I can never do it every hour. I can never do it th every three hours, four hours. It's all up to you and obviously how much storage I have available to do it. I take my uh, safeguard of copies, I go through, I can do a restore at any point in time, come back through here, and just like you normally see in your snapshots, right? Everyone's kind of familiar. So what, what do we have in addition, right? So now I have my virtual isolation, and this is a, a key piece because depending on what you're doing and how you're uh, developing your ransomware situation. Some people don't like the virtual isolation. Actually, we heard from a couple of insurance companies that they required uh, some companies to actually have more than just a virtualized, uh, virtual isolation. So with the safeguard of copy, we can actually do a physical isolation <laughs> into a secondary data center and actually do our uh, safeguard of copy on a remote system or have those safeguard of copies pushed to a remote system. So now I have it in two locations, thus, giving for its purposes, for most insurance, I have a physical isolation of the data, not just a virtual uh, isolation. So what you do, takes a immutable copy, air gap, it's undetectable uh, from an hacker or an intruder in your environment. I have an isolated area and that's what this piece right here is, this is a very nice piece because of the fact that I can go now and test my data. I can go and take a look to make sure that there's no corruption. I can make sure that the copy is good before I go to restore. That way when I'm doing a restore, I don't have to restore data that has already been, uh, uh, that has already been compromised. <laughs> Once I find the, uh, the right copy, automatically put everything back and you're off and running. This is a huge time saver. This is what keeps you from being down for weeks and days down to hours and minutes. Yes, or something. Yep. That's, that's what copies 
What is it that you're testing? You're doing just a CRC check against that that data, or how are you checking that? So we actually have a couple of different uh, ways. We actually, uh, it, and it's what you have set up in your environment. So we can actually go through and do a full scan of the data and make sure that there's no malice code or known viruses. And see, that's known... what I'm interested in, but I said don't follow how, how you would do a scan uh, against malware uh, on, the, on the appliance itself, but you have some, some uh, APIs in the, the doc that, that would talk to the ID product or what? Correct. And actually, when you take it into this area over here, there's a lot of different things we can do with it. So uh, that's why it's Safeguard Copy is the foundation of our Cyber Vault Blueprint. Mm -hmm. And the Cyber Vault Blueprint now includes a lot of other different products all working together to give you a full, uh, a full security uh, risk avert avertment. This is I think the exact words, verbiage that they use, mm -hmm. right? So this is just one portion of our Cyber Vault Blueprint. So, I don't know how many people, probably, you don't have to raise your hand for this, have been attacked already or had happened. I have actually a few customers in the 23 days, they would have loved 23 days. It was a lot longer and it cost a lot more money. Um, they, they were actually, uh, it was detrimental. One customer said each day that they were down, it cost them a million dollars and they were down for more than a month. Before being a capital. Hence, now they might be a flash and take credit card game. And, you know, most customers have insurance now. And that helps, but the, the rates are going up also, and the, and the uh, list of requirements to actually get insurance are going up too. And this uh, hits one of the insurance requirements uh, actually for you to get a discount to have it in place. And what's really nice about this is. You're not talking to the CISO necessarily at the moment. You're not talking to your security organization. This is on your storage, right? So you're doing your part. So a lot of the CISOs have been loving it because they've been coming through and saying, hey, are we talking about this? Is this something we're interested in? Hey, this is what we're deploying. And they go, oh, this is great. I was going to talk to you about what we need to do next year. And they're like, oh, well, we're refreshing our storage. And this is what, and he's like, beautiful. And then they, it, it starts that process and uh, getting them online. So, uh, there we go. Okay, so I have my immutable copy. Now we have an attack. This is what you, you're going to question, right? So I bring myself over here into recovery volume. It's a two uh, prong approach, right? Uh, it's, I go over here into my protect area before I go to my production. I go through my first copy, it's not good. I go to my next one, I go, not good. I go to the next one, it's good. I have a nice clean copy. So this is called a recovery, I mean, sorry, a restore. And once I restore it over here, then I actually do a recovery to my production. So we don't go here. Now, this is, this is managed through a separate interface than how you manage your array. So this is why they have no idea it's there. I have my administrative passwords. I'm doing everything on my system. I'm administering my storage array. There's no reference to the safeguard copy on that array at all. So I come in through a separate user set of users. I come in through a separate interface. And now I'm taking care of managing the safeguard copy. Now, there are two things when we set this up. There is a God account that we recommend after everything is set up that you delete. Then you have your user account. It's a two user authentication. So to trigger this, it's going to say user one kicked it off and it's going to send an email or a notification to user two to say, hey, are you aware of this? Is this okay? Please approve. Kind of like the old missile silo where they had two guys with the keys. It takes two guys with the key. This is because once this process goes to here and you kick off this, this is all gone. It, it is a full boom. I'm kicking everybody out. I'm kicking everything off and I'm restoring right back to that point in time. Production 
goes from here all the way to, to the coffee that's good, right? So it, it's a full recovery. So we wanna make sure that you are doing what you want to do and not I'm messing around. Clean data is coming over here. And then for the physical isolation portion, I can now take it, um, the data also and move it off to a secondary offsite array or to another location. So how does it typically look, right? So I have, I'm going in here, I have my breach. Here's where we noticed it, right? <clears throat> going through, I've detected it. I'm now at 90 minutes, we're still going. By the time I'm starting to do something, I'm now reaching into the major breach and all the way out here, recovery is now at one week and two weeks. So with IBM Safeguard Copying, we take that graph, we have our compromise, it's now detected. We can respond in 60 minutes and we've now recovered, started recovering our infrastructure in under 90 minutes from the first time we've detected it uh, and we respond. Right? That is a much, much smaller window than the two weeks and two weeks is kind of frankly being quite generous. So, I mean, we all know, I mean, I don't know how large everyone's IT staffs are, but there are a few IT staffs there. It's one or two people. That's gonna be much longer than a two week process for everything that's set up, do and configure just to start doing a recovery. So with the safeguard of copy, we can take the time all the way down into, as you see, an hour for starting the recovery. Any questions for? Okay. This runs in parallel to whatever backup schema we have now. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. And uh, we can, so obviously, you know, IBM has a uh, backup as well uh, for Spectrum Protect. We can tie it in there uh, to Spectrum Protect and do some really cool things, or we can continue to work uh, with the backup vendor that you have. But this is all done outside of backup software. So you don't need a backup software. You don't have to have a backup software for this to work. You should always have a backup software in your environment. Yeah, exactly. it, 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 <laughs> I'm going to take you guys to all different half of my customers because I have customers who think this is a replacement for backup. What well, you don't do you have, have backup. What integrations do you have to other other uh, backup with vendors like Med Backup with Beam? Mm -hmm. whatever, yes. Whatever yes. Hooks? Uh, so we we we're actually a Beam partner. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, we're actually a Net Backup partner. Um, we're a Convo partner, and we're a Zerto partner. Uh, and to the tune that we actually have um, sales plays and uh, campaigns where we are hand in hand uh, selling our products. <laughs> in essence, I mean, IBM is the largest technology company in the world. We have a product for everything from weather to uh, crunching numbers, data AI, to Watson, to tape, to backup, to storage. We have it all. We play nicely with everyone because one portion of our business probably works with them and they go together. So just because we have a backup uh, software doesn't necessarily mean we have to sell our backup software to work with other vendors out there. Everybody has, everybody's product is good and it's what you're using that you like. And I don't wanna have to come and say, you can't buy my storage because you won't buy my software. At the end of the day, we want to do what's right by the customer. If that means working and playing nicely with everyone, hey, I mean we play nicely with Dell and HP as well. Yeah, you know, so it's a it's a cooperation. You know, we stay in our lanes, they stay in our lanes, and we give the customer the best solution. Now, obviously, I'm biased. I think the best solution is a complete IBM solution, but I know that that's not always the case. And if you have Red Hat, you already probably got foot in the door with IBM because Red Hat is an IBM company as well. All right, so <laughs> you're asking about some of the tools that uh, go in here, right? So it, it, it's a whole uh, process in this piece, but as you can see, you know, we've already talked about uh, the validation and being able to go through. Uh, we have the forensics, so that's where you can actually scan and go through each of the data to make sure uh, it is, um, a clean copy to recover. Um, 
we can extract the data from the copy, right? And then recover the entire environment. So these are the two pieces that people are most important with. I can tell you right now, I've only seen a few people use this portion. It's usually this because they haven't identified the exact piece and they need it, them out of their environment. So it's usually recover the whole environment and then that's where the backups are key, right? Backup is the true air gap solution. You can't get a better air gap than backing up to tape because your tape is not in your environment. So once they've actually recovered the environment, it's usually going to tape and going, okay, which pieces can we restore? Can we take this database and we bring it back? We know that this wasn't effective and they can start rolling things forward, but they have to get back to where the environment is stable and clean, right? So it's kind of a uh, hand in hand piece. That's why I tell people have your backups because once you get going, now it's going to be, what can I recover and, and uh, minimize the loss over time, right? And that, you're going to get that from backup. Uh, then you have the offline backup copy, which is again moving in with your current backup uh, solution uh, and safeguard copy. Here's some of the integrations and stuff that we have uh, right now out of the gate: the Oracle, the DB2, SQL, uh, MongoDB. Uh, these down here, the Qradar and Guardian. These are going to give you your active. Uh, ransomware pre preventive measures. The Q Radar is one of the uh, IBM's uh, security software. It's one of the leaders in the Magic Quadrant. It's up here, I believe, we're like one or two with Q Radar. It will give you active threat uh, prevention. So as it detects that an attack is happening, it will actually turn around and go talk to uh, Safeguard a Copy and tell it, take a copyright count. And I know I'm under attack. I know something's happening. I need to make sure I have a safe copy. Get, take a copy now because obviously since I'm noticing the attack, that means they're not in, so take it right now. So that way I have a, a copy before they actually penetrate, if they penetrate at all, right? So it starts so working hand in hand and we can say, if you have a, uh, a SIEM product that you already have in house, we can tie into that. And as alerts and threats come in from that, it will turn around and talk to it and tell it to uh, take a copy or pause something. Uh, based on the threats and the uh, thresholds and stuff that you put in. So it all, again, like that's what I said, safeguard copy is the foundation, but it's all part of the cyber wall of a blueprint. Yeah, I'm watching my time, make sure I don't go over. I only have a half hour today. You're doing good. All right, so uh, one of the things that IBM is doing with KIS, and this is, a, you guys should take advantage of this, is we're actually offering free cyber assessment. Uh, right, so you contact me, talk to uh, KIS, and they'll come out and do a free assessment, no charge to you, and actually start telling you where uh, some of the threats and stuff might be in your environment and what you can do to assess it. We have a more, much deeper one, which the insurance companies like, and this is a paid one, and they come in and it's not intrusive, but they're very thorough. It's done by our security team, and they will give you a printout that the insurance companies love where, well, they love it when it comes back all green. They hate it when they go, well, what about this? What about this? They're going to tell you where a lot of uh, uh, your problems are. I know I'm getting tired. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this up really quick because I have a half hour. Uh, this is our uh, IBM uh, storage arrays. Uh, we actually have two others. So we actually have an array that fits everybody's need. We actually have a 5015 and a 5035. This is our all NVMe, uh, and it can be mixed, NVMe and SAS drives. So we have a solution, we have a storage array that fits every single budget and every single need. I'm seeing a flash there, but do you have any hybrid, any tier two, tier three? Yes, that's the 5035 and the 5015. And by the way, th this can be mixed, right? So the drives on here are um, have the ability not just to be NVMe, but also SAS are, are high density drives as well. Sure. Again, uh, I'm flying through this. Sorry, in time. Uh, what our flash ways, the replication, hyperswears, there should be one up here for hyperswap. Right. This is huge. IBM puts our money where our mouth is. If you have hyper, if you're running hyperswap, we guarantee 100% uptime on your system. 
uh, our professional services come in and they actually do the installation. Once it's done, you sign a paper, we sign a paper, and we guarantee 100% uptime. There's not many companies out there today that will put their name and guarantee that you will be up 100%. And that's the hyperspot function functionality. So it's it's all it's obviously a paid function feature, but we have customers who use this, and this is it's 100 percent uptime. Okay, um, go through here. There's one. This is the other piece on uh, this last one. Um, our flash core modules. Since this has been out in the field from day one. We've had zero drives come back. We had zero failures. And it's one thing that IBM is very proud about. And we don't have some of the constraints that other vendors have on their drives because this is an IBM manufactured drive. So we make this. This is not something we outsource or anything else. So we control uh, that piece. So while other vendors are taking six months, three months, a year to deliver product, I'm shipping out flash systems in less than three weeks. So from a time an order comes in, I'm usually anywhere from two to three weeks uh, from delivery. I'm beating the other equipment. I'm beating out, uh, beating the uh, sand switches. I'm beating out servers. We have stock and uh, we have been able to deliver on it. And I'm sorry I raised you all these. Uh, very simple encryption. My time is up, I only had 30 minutes. Um, and this is the full gamut, right? So if you have additional questions, we do have our cloud object storage, our, our scale product, uh, our GPFS, uh, your mainframe. We got our mainframe storage. Uh, we have a virtualized uh, pro, uh, uh, storage array as well. Easy tier, so we can tier from uh, each of the different uh, disk drives as well to the cloud. You name it, we have it all. All running with Spectrum virtualized on top of this product. Sorry, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out uh, to your KIS representative or myself, and I would love to do a follow-up. We can do a deeper dive and uh, even show a demo of this stuff. And let me just add that um, I'm involved in a couple of different things. Uh, bang for the buck, pretty easy. I mean, a lot of people think IBM, the cloud company, Big Blue, been around forever, they cost too much. I, we didn't even know that they were in this marketplace. Yeah. They are, and uh, they they offer tremendous value. That's all. I think it was one of the, I, I was the director of engineering for North America for my previous company. And when I came here, uh, that was one of my biggest shockers. One, like, why didn't I know about you guys? They, they just weren't focused on storage. We had so many products. Two, my is that really the performance numbers? Can you really deliver that? Yeah. Okay. Three, that can't be the right price. That was my biggest shocker was the price because just like you said, how I compete against IBM all the time was like, can you really afford that? I mean, are you looking at a touch? You know, I can't afford it. Why are you looking at IBM? You can't afford well, Ironically now, um, now I'm here, I actually see the numbers. There is a price point for everybody. And I will tell you that we're selling more MBME to customers who were like, no, I'm just looking at flash. I just want, you know, a flash drive. And I'm like, I can put you into NVMe at cheaper than cost that you're getting for your competitors. And they're like, this is a way to call. So uh, give us a shot, you won't be disappointed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.